Okay, if I switch this to FK, we can see that um, we've got a nice squash and stretch in there. It's working quite well. We've got an attribute to switch it on and off because, you know, for the, the IK, sometimes we don't want it to squash and stretch. But if I just undo and go back to FK, we don't really have much control of this squash and stretch. I mean, if we pull this control out, you can see the IK squash and stretch is still working. But scaling these joints, you can see scaling the first one, it's only really working now because it's pushing that wrist control out. If we go to scale the next one up, it's not pushing that wrist, so it's all working off the IK stretch, which we don't really want because it's not accurate enough because you can see the elbows here when it should be up here. And again, it's not going to work really well. So what we need to do is set up the stretch for the FK and then set up a switch that's connected to the IK FK. So if we're in FK, we're using the FK switch system. If we're in IK, we're using the IK switch system, stretch system even. So to do this, let's go to Windows, render it as Hypershade. And I'll just hide the mesh again. So show polygons. And I'm going to select these joints. So we're going to shift select each one of these. And remember the forearm twist, we also had scale on that as well. So remember to select that. We don't scale the end joint, so we can just ignore him. And I'm just going to go graph inputs and outputs connections. And you can see a massive graph. But I won't be too worried because you can see here that these are all the hair follicles that we set up for the ribbon. So I'm just going to move this selected to the side. So these are just the joints we selected. I'm going to move those to the side. Have a look for the stretch in the IK. So you can see here this is the stretchy IK. Just deselect those two. Because we have that condition node in there. So that's how I'm identifying it move this over here. I'm just going to select this big section of the graph and go graph. Remove selected from graph. I'm going to do the same as I did before. Instead of doing these at the same time, I'm going to do the left and then I'll go ahead and do the right quickly afterwards. Okay, so I'm just going to order this. and Okay, so you've got these three, these four joints that are scaling. So all we really want to do here is actually just take, so it's, um, if we just double check what these connections, so this graph up here is for the forearm twist, so we can ignore that, we'll just leave it up there for the moment. So again by renaming these I can just see that this is a BC left arm stretch switch, so now that's for the stretch and it's going between a value of 1 and a value of the stretch so the value of 1 in this case is default because you know we need that 1 for the scale so what I'm actually going to do here is create another blend colour so I'll just type in blend bring that across here I'll reset all these to 1 and the blender to 1 as well, might as well and I'm putting them to 1 because again the default scale is 1 and I'm actually going to create one of these for each joint and put this in so I'm taking the output I'm going to take the output R into the scale We can see scale x is greyed out because scale x has already been constrained up, but we can override that by just clicking it here. So you can see it's that line got deleted and we've now got a line here showing that it's been that connection's been removed and replaced with this new connection here. So what we're gonna do here basically is take the scale of this joint and put it into another blend colour. And this blend colour, much like what we did with the arm follow, we're going to bypass it by adding another blend colour in. So basically here, a value of colour R is going to be connected up to the IK 
the IK scale so that the actual, I mean not the IK sorry this is going to be connected up to the actual scale of the FK controls so that way as we scale the FK controls you know it inputs its value in here which you know then scales the joint if we choose the other colour which is this one down here what this will be doing is taking its value from the IK stretch system so again what we're doing here is bypassing it so when we're in FK we're always in FK stretch and it's going to ignore this IK part of the graph so continuing on I'm going to do the same here reload left take colour R reload right and the scale X same again reload left output R reload right oops reload right on that joint scale X and last but not least reload scale X close and I'll just copy the names across so blend colour left arm stretch switch so I'm going to put this to um, FK stretch Swiss uh, bit of a tongue twister uh, FK stretch switch underscore forearm twist is that the let's check which joint it is, yep it's the forearm twist or one I'll copy the name over paste it and this is the elbow B so it's the, not the forearm, it's the elbow B copy the name paste it over here this will be the elbow A paste it again and this joint is the shoulder so I'm just going to copy that name ok, so just renaming them as we go along so now I'm going to do again because this is the IKFK I'm just going to graph, add selected to graph for the IKFK control. And again, we could have done a lot of this, all this through Mel, but I really like having the ability to blend and having an actual, you know, physical control on the rig. So not we can actually use this rig fully with no Mel scripting. And then, of course, we can use the Mel if we want to. And just by tying everything to this IKFK control, it makes it even easier for Mel scripting as well because. If you think if we want to switch between the IK and FK, all we really need to do is just set Atta on one attribute, this curve, and it's connected to everything, so it's just going to go down the graph and switch between IK and FK. If we'd have done everything through Mel, there'd be no connection to one control, so we'd have to, you know, every time we switch between IK and FK, set all these orient constraints, point constraints, all these different connections up every single time but by just tying it to one control we can just switch this on or off basically okay so when it's set to one we are in um, FK so that basically means that the colour one is going to be FK so with this IK FK switch I'm just going to put the we're working with the left arm so put the left into the blender so rearrange this so it's easy to see do the same again, blender, blender, and blender again. Okay, so because um, it's set to 1, which is FK, we want the top, the colour 1, so if this is 1, it's picking the top values, so we want this to be the FK stretch. So this means the second um, the colour 2 is the IK. So now what we can do is just take this old IK graph that we made earlier and stick it into the colour 2. So take the output, colour 2. Colour 2. Colour 2. And again this is the same with the arm as we did before. The FK has priority. And then the IK 
you know, feeds into these, so we can work with the two. Okay, so if it's set to zero, we you taking the second value, which is this old graph here that we made, created earlier for the IK stretch. So that's pretty straightforward. Setting it to that, just use the old graph. Setting it to a value of one is taking this top value here, which is currently one, but now what we're going to do is input these two controls here. Graph, add selected to graph. Put far arm, this one here. And now what we have to do is just drag and drop other, and we're going to take the scale of this and put it into the color one. So if you think, um, this basically means if blend is set to zero, and the blend is controlled by the IKFK. So if this is zero, we are in IK. So we are selecting the IK section of the graph. If you set to one, we are, are not using the second value. So basically, this graph gets forgotten about, doesn't get used, and we just take the scale straight from this control here. So you can see now, because we're taking that, because we're in FK, we are using the FK scale. Okay, so I'll reset that back to one. And we'll do the same for these other joints. And we'll remember that the first forearm is just scaling the you know the, the I mean the first arm control is just scaling the arm. Because we have that double um jointed elbow and we have the forearm joint, we want this scale to scale all three of these. So all we're gonna do here is take this and take the scale and I'll take the scale, colour one. Reload right, colour one. Reload right, colour one. And again, I'm connecting all three, but really, if we look at the connection here, the scale X, so the colour R is going to scale X. So we don't really have any connections to the Y or Z, they're just getting left as normal, because we don't want to scale with them. Okay, so I'll just move this graph to the side. And you can see now, hopefully, there we go. That's cool. Okay, so I'm just going to show this and get this tie control and you can see here by scaling this up um, we're getting that nice scale, it's working but again this risk control is staying behind which again we don't really want so I'm going to take this control here shift select the tie control and go to constraint scale so now as we scale this the tie control is scaling which is what we want that's working well but again the tie control should be connected to the wrist or the wrist this group here So what I'm going to do now, so with that group selected, I'm going to bring up this graph again and go to graph. So we've got the the FK working and the IK switch. So just to double check that before we progress, actually, if I switch this to zero, so IK. Okay, we can see the stretch IK is still working, and we've still got that, you know, blend which is this first here. So the IK. Uh, blend is still working, we could switch that on and off and then that feeds down into the FK controls so we're just double checking we haven't changed the IK which we set up earlier so that's still working so now what we need to do I'm going to select the risk control, hit up to select that rotate, that offset group just go graph, clear graph, graph um, all inputs and outputs okay so just try and remember did this a couple of lessons back. Set this back up to similar sort of so where's that tie? Right the tie control here. And the global IK. And we just want to spend a few minutes 
getting used to this graph again. So the graph this is the FK FK rotate so trans and rotate this is the trans rotate the IK so I'm just rearranging all these to get back to that and just get it in my head because just refresh okay so I'm getting the sort of gist of what this graph was so we've got the tie control again so if you get confused about this um, you could go back and check out the tutorial when we set up you know the follow attribute for this so you have the tie control it's feeding into the these blank holes down here so we can either blend between following it or not and then again we had if it doesn't follow it picks the IK I mean the FK up here so the FK has priority the FK can set it if it wants to follow or not ok so I'm going to add a couple more so I'm just going to add one more here and this is going to be the scale so because we added the scale constraint to the tie control what we basically want to do is as we scale the forearm it's going to scale its tie control and then we want that to scale you know the wrist control I want to scale that up so I'm going to go to take the tie control put it into the blank color other take the scale and put it into the color 1 I'll set the second scale to one just so that's you know the default on. Okay now we want to say that IKFK when the IKFK is set to one it's gonna pick the one value which is taking the FK scale. If it's set to IK it's just taking a default of one. And it's not gonna scale and it's not gonna affect it. So now I'm just gonna take this put into so take the output put it into this scale hit close and we just need to connect this blender to the global IK and FK switch so I'll put that into the other take the left IK FK put it into the blender hit close and I'll just move this graph so basically it can be quite confusing this but essentially we're taking doing the same that we did before with the translate and the rotates and we're taking the scale of this tie control and the scale of the tie control is scale constrained to this forearm control so as we scale the forearm up we scale the tie control and then this tie control inputs its values into the color one so if the blend is set to one so if we're in FK basically we are just taking the scale of this forearm and applying it to that group which will scale up so the wrist will scale up with the rest of the rig so just to demonstrate that if I switch this to 1 we are in FK which means that blend colour is now switched to 1 so we're taking the scale of the tie and as we scale the forearm we scale the tie which in turn scales the wrist group so you can see now we're scaling the wrist group Okay, so that all that's now working. So what we can do is scale these joints. I mean, scale these controls. And we've got FK scaling. And then if we switch back to the IK, we still have the ability to switch stretching IK. Okay, cool. So the mel script side of this, all we would really do is when you switch between IK and FK it will try and match the pose but we have nothing to tell it to scale so all you really would do is query the scale of this joint here scale X and apply that scale value to the scale X of the FK control then query one of these query it set to 2.54 just query that and apply that to the FK control